Hello friends, hello coaches, how are you? This is your executive and life coach Rick Serrano saying hello from Luxembourg. I hope you're all doing very well. Thank you for joining my channel once again. Well, today I will be revisiting the old theory called the picky picky cherry picking theory, which is a creation of mine that I have mentioned you in the past several times. And we have a couple of videos here in the channel about it. Uh, it is a theory that will help you identify whether or not you are with the right love partner. And also, if you are trying to find a right love partner, it will be very helpful for you to be intelligent, emotionally intelligent enough to find and identify and keep that person. So. Uh, this is a, an old theory of mine. It was created in 2017 and you have probably heard about it, but the, there are two reasons why I have now updated the theory and I bring it to you as a revisited version. Let me explain you. So the two main factors that uh, have uh, happened now uh, that I revisit the theory are two things. So the first one is that you have given me a lot of feedback and I want to thank you uh, if you were one of the participants, one of the more than 140 people who participated in the survey that we launched earlier this year on the picky picky cherry picking theory. Now with your feedback the theory has become uh, considerably stronger I believe because now it is even more than before supported by data so that is the first reason. The second reason why I have revisited the theory is that the theory has been presented at HBS. Yeah, um, a couple of uh, students uh, at the Harvard Business School have um, identified the theory back in February 2021 and then we, they contacted me and we have held a couple of, um, a couple of meetings and to sort of um, explain them the theory very much in detail and then they are uh, at, in Boston, they are at the school at, uh, in Boston and they have presented it at HBS so uh, the, the people who have been um, analyzing the theory now have presented it at uh, our prestigious business school, the Harvard Business School and they have received uh, more feedback which in turn they passed on to me and I made some fine-tuning of, of the theory now. So the theory, you know, I've been coaching for about 14 years now and uh, in all these years of coaching, uh, many people come to me uh, with uh, issues of um, their, their partner, their love partner, uh, or they come to me because they struggle to find the right person. And over these years, I've been mapping uh, what happens uh, in terms of what, what makes a successful uh, relationship, what makes a painful failure. And I have um, identified that there are consistent patterns, I call them consistent underlying patterns that lead either to brilliant success in the relationship or to painful failure. And the worst is that we tend to repeat, so when, when, uh, when people go into these underlying patterns in a negative way, I have consistently seen that people tend to repeat that and they cannot sort of break the vicious circle that creates around it. So I said to myself, well, what can we do to structure the theory uh, in such a way that people can go for more brilliant successes and, uh, and avoid painful failure? And uh, my coaching basically takes people through 10 simple steps to make them sure that they are with the right uh, love relationship or if they are not with somebody but they want to find someone the picky picky cherry picking theory helps you in searching uh, systematically searching and finding that person so i do believe and now the data supports it that the more someone adheres to these steps the higher the chances of succeeding 
Now, when I say steps, don't think that this is like a mathematical formula or like an algorithm. In reality, the word steps means nothing else than honest self-questioning. So I'm going to ask you to be honest to yourself and ask a series of questions. That That's the 10 steps, but it's a, really, I call them also the cherries. So 10 cherries. These are the 10 cherries that I will be talking uh, to you about today. First cherry is called serenity. The second one is called doubt. The third one is about the values. The fourth one is LTLP, which stands for long term life plan. The fifth cherry is about the 15 plus rule. The sixth cherry is what I call the Jack Welch's question. The seventh cherry is your ideal. The eighth cherry is the airplane and the ninth cherry is time and finally the 10 cherry is casting the casting process the selection process now the cherries are grouped in 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 two in, in two subsets so the first subset the first group of five cherries is aimed at self-awareness and definition so I'm gonna ask you to take conscious of your situation of, of your uh, status and to define where you are and what you want from your love relationship. That's going to be the five steps, the five first cherries. Then, then we will move to the next five cherries and they are more into the action side. So we are going to be talking about exactly, okay, given what we have analyzed with the first five cherries, what are we going to decide? What are we going to implement in terms of concrete action? So, so without more introduction, let's get started. So the first cherry. So the first cherry is really the most important one, probably. And if from all this video, you only take away one cherry, let me, let me ask you to be cherry number one. Cherry number one is called serenity. Serenity is really the name of the game. If you want to have a successful love relationship, you absolutely must concentrate on securing serenity. You need to be completely sure that the person that you are with gives you serenity. And if serenity is not there, then nothing's going to work, no matter what you do. Now, what is serenity? We need to define this. Okay, so the definition that I like is... Uh, I, I composed myself this um, this definition uh, starting of, uh, the, of, of course, the Cambridge and the Harvard dictionaries, uh, but I have added parts of myself. And for me, serenity is the state of being at internal peace, calm and untroubled. So you need to be untroubled in your relationship. Serenity means you will not feel disturbed by unexpected, unpleasant fluctuations. So I don't want you to be through ups and downs. If you are in a relationship where your partner takes you through ups and downs and one day he loves you totally and the next day he hates you totally or one day your partner is super faithful and the next day she is completely um, not to, to be trusted then that is not serenity. If you are in any of those situations where your uh, stability goes up and down, down and up, up and down, down and up, then you know for sure you do not have serenity. And let me tell you uh, again, this is the most important cherry. If you don't have serenity, you are absolutely wasting your time. And as we will see, I don't want you to waste any time because our life is short and we are here to enjoy it. And as you know, I always tell you this in my videos, I want you living an extraordinary life, a beautiful life, a plentiful life. So if you lack serenity, you're going nowhere. Okay, so that's cherry number one. Fair enough. Let's move now on to cherry number two. Cherry number two is a simple rule that says, if there's a doubt, then there is no doubt at all. Yeah, you heard it right. If in your relationship, if in your love uh, relationship, if in your marriage or uh, your partnership or whatever you want to call it, if there is a doubt, a, a substantial, important, essential, fundamental doubt, then, then there is no doubt at all. You got to get out of there. You know, Doubts are clear signs. Let, let me repeat this. Doubts are clear signs. 
they are not only blurry suspicious clues the problem is that you know when we tend to deny them we dilute them we close our ears and eyes to the truth while in reality the the truth is shouting at you listen to me if you have a doubt about your partner if you have a have a doubt an important doubt about your wife or your husband or or your partner again whatever you want to call it then then there's no doubt there's something wrong there and we need to take some action and we will get to the action part but first of all identify whether there is doubt in your relationship if there is doubt then more than likely you're going to have to make some changes so uh, let me now uh, give you some numbers about this rule or cherry number two if there is a, a doubt then there's no doubt at all 85 percent of my clients and respondents to the survey 85 percent of my clients who have experienced a painful love story admit to have spotted problems since the very beginning of the relationship so what what does this mean this means that 85 percent of the people who had a doubt that doubt ended up being a definitive no-go that doubt ended up being a fundamental problem that was not possible to surmount so in in other words they had a doubt from the very beginning of the relationship well guess what uh, there was no reason to doubt because in reality the relationship was going nowhere so keep this number in mind 85 percent of people i mean um, is, is a, a, a sort of an evidence that this is uh, going exactly the way we want to go now let me now pass to cherry number three cherry number three is about your values okay as i told you the first group of cherries is about self-awareness and definition okay uh, there are some things that you really care about in life and those things let, let's say some five to seven things that you simply cannot negotiate you need to clearly identify them and commit fully to respect them for example let me make a simple example if you for example value uh, honesty and, and this is not obvious because there are some people who don't care that much about honesty and that's okay but if you do care about honesty I want you to put that honesty in your list of values and I want you to commit fully to yourself to respect that value that means that if you find someone who can be marvelous who can be fantastic in many, in many respects but is not honest you don't want to be there you cannot betray yourself or let me make you another example if you for example have as a value uh, the fact that I'm gonna say something a little bit more stupid but but still important if somebody says you know for me hygiene you know cleanliness uh, you know uh, being very neat and being always smelling right and so forth if that is a value for you you don't want to commit and accept somebody who is not clean and neat you know uh, that, that that's maybe a silly example but the point is you want to identify your values and then simply brutally stick to those values and do not negotiate them do not concede in those values because values in the end are at the basis of any successful or unsuccessful relationship and I have also uh, evidence that supports supports this third cherry let me give you the number nine out of ten coaches declared to me that they have suffered a painful relationship recently uh, and they have accepted that they had compromised at least one important value to stay in that relationship that that means that nine out of ten people who had a a not so successful relationship or let me say it straight a fail a failure in the relationship have ab admitted that they were betraying at least one value so they knew the values they knew what was important to them and yet they and, and yet they conceded in those uh, values because they wanted to make the relationship successful because they didn't want to lose the person because they wanted to not be alone and, and that's a big mistake if you have 
uh, some values that you care for you don't want to compromise on it that's the point mm -hmm. that's cherry number three now let me pass to cherry number four and this is also very important and it's, it's part of the definition phase of the process cherry number four is asking you for your LTLP I want you to visualize your long-term life plan no, no matter how old you are whether you are 18 or, or 35 or 55 we always have or we always should have a long-term life plan where do you see yourself 15 years down the road where do you see yourself 35 years down the road where, where do you see yourself in the future that's the question okay now if you identify that if you know exactly where you're going okay you must have full clarity of what you want long term from life and hold on to it like a burning nail really like a burning nail then make sure it's congruent with that of your partner so make a list of the things that you want to accomplish long long term and notice that this is not the same than the values so the values is the things that you care about the, the, the things that you appreciate the long-term plan is where you want to go 15 20 30 years down the road and you want to ask your partner about his or hers long-term plan and make sure there are not substantial differences you want to make sure that they sort of can can coexist a, a basic example here is of course if you want to have kids and your partner doesn't then that's a big problem that is a big problem and that is not going to go away because it is fundamentally something different long term plan wise another example is uh, if if you for example want to go and work abroad but your partner is completely uh, fixed in in your city because maybe he or she has family or whatever or the reason which could be of course valid but the point is you have a long-term plan of going abroad and making a career abroad and your partner doesn't want to move well that's a long-term plan difference and it is very risky if you breach those uh, differences if you try to ignore those differences let me give you some numbers to 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 quantify this the number here is 85 percent 83 percent sorry 83 percent of my coaches De uh, declaring to be in a successful love relationship so in a successful love relationship have confirmed that their long-term life plan and those of their partners coincide to a large extent listen to this to a large extent okay so you want to sit down with your partner and map your long-term plans and verify whether they are you know similar to a large degree or not and if they are not then you should take some action don't expect this to go away don't expect this to suddenly disappear and certainly do not compromise on this so this is cherry number four now cherry number five okay is going to close the first part the first subset of cherries which is about the um, self-awareness and definition and cherry number five is what I call the NW5 15 plus rule the NW15 plus rule means that there is no way that anyone older than 15 years of age can make any fundamental change to their personality especially if these changes are requested by you so by someone else what I'm trying to tell you is that if you are hoping that your partner changes anything fundamental forget it you are absolutely wasting your time no matter how much you want that to happen it is pure wishful thinking if your partner has something that you cannot tolerate if your partner does something that you don't like if your partner has uh, something that you cannot live with uh, important of course important things of course there is no way that they will change that for you even if they love you even if you love the part your partner he or she will simply not be able like physically able to change you know if let me make you a stupid example if for example somebody has been smoking for 30 years quitting smoking is going to be 
a hell of a difficult task. Well, even if that person wants to quit smoking, it's going to be very, very difficult, right? How many times have you seen that? Okay. Now, uh, independently of smoking, any anything that you wish that your partner would change, it's going to be very difficult that, that your partner changes that, especially if you are the one asking. If they decided alone that they are going to change it, they, they might have some chances, of course. I mean, everybody can do what, or everybody can change, of course, if they want to. The problem here is that frequently we hope that our partner understands, and that's a problem, that we want them to change and that it makes sense to change and that, you know, it makes sense that, that he becomes faithful or it makes it makes the sense that she becomes uh, neat and all or ordered and you know what if you are hoping that that's never going to happen so just be aware of that just just uh, be clear about that now let me show you what my respondents to the survey and my coaches uh, tell me that that we can quantify this eight in 10 coaches, here the number is wrong, sorry for that, 10 should be 8. So 8 in 10 coaches, let me correct that as I explained you. So, um, you know, 8 in 10 coaches confirm that an early identified undesirable behavior stay there throughout the love story, despite promises. The two last words is what I want to underline. Despite promises, folks. So. If you really want somebody to change, I mean, if it is something important, something really undesirable, a uh, behavior that you really don't like, keep ho don't 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 waste time hoping. Just you either accept the person as he or she is, or just accept that the person will not change that behavior because promises in terms of changing behaviors are simply a waste of your time nothing more so that's cherry number five now let's move to the second part of the cherries the second sets of the cherries which are more about what you can do now that you have identified where you stand now question number six is what i call or what is uh, yeah i call it the jack welch's key question you know um jack welch you probably know was for 22 years the CEO of General Electric and he was uh, he is one of the most respected managers ever in the history of business uh, so he sup supervised a huge company the General Electric company with mm, hundreds of uh, managers and, and, and directors and CEOs and everything and he was going around the world supervising those businesses and he had two critical questions. The question was, if you were not in this business today, would you get in? He would ask the people who had a business that was not performing well. And if the answer was no, then he immediately asked, okay, so what are you going to do about it? Well, I take Jack, Jack Welch's question and I apply it to love. I apply it to relationships and I ask you, okay, you are now in a relationship, okay, you are now in a marriage, you are now with somebody and you are doubting. Okay, let me ask you, if you were not in this love relationship today, would you get in? If you hesitate in giving me a clear yes, or if your answer is a no, then it's very simple. You need to act. You need to act. And I want you to ask yourself, this question very honestly very very honestly if you were not married with this person today if you were not in this relationship today would you go again into it just just answer the question yourself okay now let's move on to cherry number seven cherry number seven is about definition i want you to sit down take a piece of paper and be very picky, that is why the, the theory uh, is called the picky picky cherry picking theory. I want you to sit down and define in black and white, don't be humble, don't be humble, put in words your absolutely ideal candidate. Allow yourself to, ask, 
to ask absolutely anything that is important to you, anything. Don't be humble, ask big time. And please, please, this goes especially to middle-aged women. Don't think that you are too old to be picky. No, I want you to be super picky. I want you to be exigent. I want you to be ambitious. I want you to be really very, very strict and ask whatever you want. Put it in a piece of paper. Don't be shy, be as specific as possible and ask as if Santa was coming to town for you. I want you to be really very exigent. Don't be humble. Write it down create your ideal candidate's profile. You know, this is like when in companies we want to hire, let, let's say that in a, in a company they wanted to hire a marketing manager, a new marketing manager. Well, they would simply go about and write a job description with the perfect candidate and they will be very picky in defining the future marketing manager. Well, it's just the same. I want you to be very exigent and write down whatever you want. If you want a wife, if you want a husband, if you want a boyfriend, just write down everything and absolutely everything that you want. Be exigent. That is why my theory is called the picky picky cherry picking theory. I want you to cherry pick the best people on earth. There are many great people out there waiting for you. You want to be super picky. Cherry number eight. Okay. Okay, folks, this is where I really want you to pay attention. Cherry number eight is called cleaning the airplane. Okay. Let's imagine that you have already identified your ideal candidate and now you're going to go and try to find a new relationship. And then you say, I'm ready. I have identified my values. I have identified my long-term plan. I have, um, you know, uh, identify my ideal candidate. Now I'm going to go and, and search for the blue prince or, or the pink princess or whatever you want to look for. But okay, before going there, I want you and I need you to clean your airplane before boarding. What I mean is what I mean is that I want you to just like in the airport. No, when you go to the airport, you are waiting to jump into the uh, airplane and you are probably uh, you see the previous fly arriving and you see how all the passengers get off the aircraft and if you notice you never go in the in the airplane immediately why because they are cleaning the airplane for you well when you jump into a plane you don't want to find in your seat you don't want to find a, a used old newspaper or a chewing gum or a, a, an old uh, bar of chocolate wrap or anything like that right you want to find a clean and and properly orderly airplane well relationships are exactly the same nobody wants to find trash from previous passengers nobody wants to find the chewing gum from the previous passenger nobody wants to find the Starbucks cup of coffee from the previous passenger is the same folks. Please, if you are going into a relationship, make sure you first clean anything that you have from the past. I don't mean denying your past. I don't mean canceling your previous relationships. What I mean is that you don't want to carry vestiges of your previous relationship with the new person that you will meet. I don't want you that you are dating the new person and all of a sudden the the recently uh, abandoned girlfriend is calling back to you. If you want to go into a new relationship, please make sure your airplane is totally clean. Please make sure that if you have recently divorced and that's okay with me, I have no issues with that. If you have recently finished a relationship, just finish it right. Just finish it completely fully totally before going into the new relationship please and please ask your the person that you're dating make sure you ask the person to have to offer you to give you a very clean airplane don't accept ex-girlfriends calling around don't accept ex-husbands uh, uh, around uh, the relationship that you get in needs to be clean, 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 please. 
this is very very important and the numbers support this let me show you 92 percent of my clients who have experienced a painful love story recognize that they did not have a clean airplane at the beginning of the relationship either their either them or the other person that means that trash from the previous passengers really really affect a relationship so make sure you know it's also a matter of respect towards the new person that you meet and towards yourself make make sure that your airplane is clean when you accept the new passengers please and also ask it from the other person of course so this is cherry number eight now moving on to cherry number nine let me tell you very clearly and very loud your most precious resource is time you must understand that your time is so valuable that you cannot afford to lose even one day with the wrong person especially because the right person is out there waiting for you let, let me repeat that out there folks there there is the right person for you no matter how what age you have no matter what condition you have you don't need to spend one more day with the wrong individual if you are not satisfied with the person if you are not happy with the person don't waste one single more day close it clean the plane and go and look for the perfect person that is why i say the picky picky cherry picking theory i want you to ask the best from life and i want you to go and get it because you deserve it you deserve it please so uh, now the 10th uh, the 10th uh, cherry is very very important and it's called the casting process the casting process of the cherry picky the picky picky cherry picking theory says you know now that you have um, um, assimilated all the nine previous cherries and you are going into the task of finding yourself a new a new couple a new partner a new husband a new girlfriend whatever you want to call it I need you to become the most exigent the most strict called an objective let me call it talent hunter you need to be a talent hunter the, the, the most exigent that you have ever imagined and you must become also the fastest and most efficient discriminator talent matcher that means you're gonna go out with people many people and you give them a tr you give them a chance but if you see they don't work because they don't adhere to your values to your long-term plan because they don't have a clear clean airplane because they don't give you serenity and because they don't comply with any of the 10 um, cherries simply move on don't go for a second coffee or a second dinner or a second weekend in the Bahamas with that person that is not making you super ultra happy. Don't go for a second chance with that relationship that made you suffer. Just don't go for second parts if the previous experience was negative. Because again, people will not change. People cannot abandon unpleasant behaviors that you don't like. And people tend to repeat mistakes of course i'm not trying to say that people do not deserve second opportunities they do but the chances of that being successful are so low and the chances of finding a new person out there brilliant fresh intelligent handsome treating you well are so high that i don't want you to be wasting your time so that is the revised version of the picky picky cherry picking theory the 10 steps of the theory are continuously connected and as you see they feed each other you must learn to move along the 10 steps naturally i want you to uh, understand them all of the all of them all the 10 and you need to feel comfortable moving from one to the other and and feel how they connect because you know it's not that you apply just one cherry and then it's going to work no i want you to get natural with the 10 cherries i want you to get used to uh, understanding how they connect and how they enrich and how they support each other and i guarantee you if you follow them i guarantee you you're gonna be finding very quickly a right partner or you might be
be with the right partner already you might only need some fine tuning some changes minor changes that that can be implemented together but make sure you don't compromise your values make sure you don't waste your time make sure they treat you well and you can be absolutely sure that there are out there somewhere out there several people not one is this is not just about one blue prince in the far 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 away castle waiting for you no i'm telling you in your city wherever you live in your city in your company in your community there are several people totally adequate to become an ideal love partner of yours but it is up to you to act and find the love of your life you just need one perfect cherry and let me underline perfect cherry i want you to be picky picky when doing the cherry picking well let me also tell you the misleading idea that you might be doomed to remain sad and lonely in this life or even worse that you need to accept mediocre love should be extra extracted completely from your brain and your heart again especially for people in their middle ages that are told by family and friends oh you know you should be aware of your age you should accept because you know you're 45 or you're almost 50 or you know you're not so good looking all that is crap all that is crap there is uh, a, a great uh, cherry waiting out there for you you don't want to accept any of these ideas and you don't want to take anything that is not really fantastic for you please listen to me now finding your ideal love partner should become an activity that you enjoy so the cherries is not about suffering i don't want you to think that these 10 cherries are here to make your life miserable no just the opposite i want you to understand them i want you to feel comfortable with them i want you to enjoy applying them and one that makes you grow as a person i want you to grow as a person uh, this is not something that should be unpleasant or uncomfortable. I want you to to uh, shine and I want you to, to remember what I always tell you. Life is extraordinary. Make it extraordinary. Make it beautiful. Make it great. You deserve it. Well, uh, if you want... Uh, if you want to know more about the picky picky cherry picking theory of course do not hesitate reach out to me i will be very happy to talk to you uh, i will be of course um, taking any questions that you might have any critics any comments just leave them here in the channel or contact me through my website or my phone i am also on instagram as rick serrano coach uh, or you can contact me here uh, through WhatsApp or to, through the YouTube channel. Do not hesitate. If you have any doubts, reach out to me. I will, I'll be very happy to meet you. And I will be very glad to discuss with you uh, any, any potential questions that you might have. I really invite you to subscribe to my channel and to follow me here in the next uh, video. But let me leave you with the message. You are worth gold you deserve a fantastic love partner do not settle for less thank you very much rick serrano your executive life coach from luxembourg take good care and i will see you here in the next one goodbye